Alex Hildebrand, Mason Eck, Michael Mercer, James McNeil, Andrew Matusik, Travis Hardcastle, Alex Wozkob, John Muller, Michael Carter, Brandon Glenn, Shane O'Banion, Tracy Quo, Mark Denton, Devin Adar, Michael Hoist, Chad Wages, Kerry Moore, Carlos Badali. And Mikey, it looks like Brock Peterson out front as he goes through the Ten Commandments. Early hole shot and early lead. Hole shot and early lead, I should say. So Brock Peterson making his way around. That's the Ohio boy leading this 30 plus class around for the first lap. And Jackson, we're all seeing a bunch of shuffling in the backside of the top five there. A couple of cowies that got shuffled back. One rider almost going down on the inside as they head back in Storyland. How about this view, boys? Oh, this, this is, is what we're talking one. about. That's a game changer. So your leader's making their way out of Storyland. Big stretch there for your leader as he gets ready to head off into the sand. He, look at that, Jackson, already opening up about a second over second and third place. As he get ready to come up and over the Rocky Mountain, let's see whether or not he's going to send this. We saw a couple of riders skying over this thing yesterday. It looks like he's going to scrub it off for now. And Zach, that number two of Rock Peterson on the Honda, he knows he's got that lead, and he, like you're saying, is trying to get it stretched out this morning as he jumps his way into the Polysport Pond Sand Sweeper. And it looks like we've got the number 17 sitting in second place with the number 12 trying to slingshot around the outside on the Kawasaki. The 58 and 33 machine going to round out our top five as they go into the lap number one. I see the number 61, Babbitt's Kawasaki of Michael Mitchell sitting just inside that top 10. He was about third coming around the first turn. A lot of shuffling up in the front here in this plus 30 class early. We've got a pass for second. And your leader taking a couple pulls on the roll-offs, makes his way through the mechanics area. And the number two leads the way. Looks like that Cowie was able to make the pass for second place there, the number 12. And then the number 17, Mason Eck now holding down that final podium spot with the 58 sitting just behind. That's going to be Dustin Jensen coming out of Florida. Look at the drive. Your leader just got through the Ten Commandments there, Jackson. And already starting to see a little bit of separation inside that top two. As the number two is trying to be the number one here early. Starting things off with a bang, making a statement as he triples back off into Storyland. And Zach sitting in second, that's going to be the number 12 Kawasaki of Jason McConnell. And I'm starting to watch the Suzuki it's there in sixth place. He was sitting about eighth. The last time I saw him now is shown in the sixth place position. So a couple of the yellow bikes working their way inside the top five. And Zach, look at the lead that number two has been able to make here on lap number two. Yeah, he comes up and over the Rocky Mountain, getting ready to sky over this big triple here. Smooth sailing out front for the number two as he makes his way through the fan, four sand sweeper around that polysport pond. And the Cowie, he's been sticking to that outside line the whole time there. First time around, I don't think his butt touched the seat once on the pegs the whole time around. That's going to be Jason McConnell followed by Mason Eck there in that third place. He's going to be on the number 17 KTM. So now showing across the line there, there is the number 17 with heavy pressure. Jensen just behind him. And then he's bringing the number 33, Glenn, on the Kawasaki as well. So we're sticking with this battle for third place. This is for the final podium spot at the moment. And Eck currently holds that spot down. Peterson and McConnell running one and two. You saw just there the tail end of the Kawasaki of McConnell. But right now, the heat, Jackson, is for this final podium spot. And Zach, that number two is doing exactly what he came here to do as he makes his way through those Ten Commandments. Still followed by the number 12 and the number 17. The man won a, er, won a big early lead. And I'm trying to see. We got smoke coming out of one of those riders going through the Ten Commandments there. I just saw them in the backside of your screen. It looked like it was a Honda. But yeah, we saw right when we flipped to the Ten Commandments, Peterson had almost that entire section covered. He was exiting the Commandments before McConnell was even hitting the first jump as they soar off into Storyland. 
And Jackson, we talk about how rough this track gets, uh, how brutal, how deep the ruts are, big the breaking bumps are. Not the story right here in this first moto. This is the first moto of the week, the best the track's probably going to be. But as you can see on these motorcycles, it's a little wet out there because the amount of water that they do to prep for the whole day. So this track is going to change a lot here in this 20 minutes. Yeah, Zach, with these early motos, you know, it is early in the day for them, but then they get to set the lines. They get to choose which lines they're going to take. They don't have to go with the ruts that are already made. They get to go and make the ruts themselves. And it looked like the number 33 was going to try to make a pass there for fourth. Wasn't able to get the drive out of the inside. Here we see a pass attempt going through that Thor Sand Sweeper around the Polysport Pond. And see if he tries to cut back across to the inside. No, X still going to hold on to it for now. But I'm telling you what, the number 58. And that might be it. A mistake from X. The there it is. He sticks it. So a solid pass there from the 58 KTM of Jensen, making his way up into the third place spot. But Eck on that number 17 machine, he is not wanting to give it up easy as he tries to get to the inside. A little bobble there, Zach. I think that might That's do it there. That's got to seal the deal, I do believe. And we talk about the fight that these riders are going to put up out here at the ranch. If a rider gets past you, if you're able to pass them right back, it's almost demoralizing in a sense. Oftentimes, they're not able to respond again. So Eck really putting a charge on right now as he dives to the inside, headed into the Ten Commandments. He wants that third place spot back. And look at that, Zach. We get to see the different lines coming into play here as he triples out of the Ten Commandments. But the 58 going to be able to make it stick, get in that last podium spot here. Taking a look back, I see the number 61, Michael Mitchell, sitting on that bubble spot there in the top 10. He's got McNeil on the Suzuki just in front of him, the number 20. And Zach, we still got 13 minutes and 20 seconds to go here in this one, so there's still plenty of opportunities. And I tell you what, as we saw the number 17 of Eck pull a tear off there, he better be careful because he has got a rear view mirror full of the number 33 of Glenn. He was putting pressure on the 58 earlier, and now he's trying to make a pass on the 17 as well. Yeah, Zach, this is where we the recovery comes in. This is where you got to reset, as Megawatt was saying this morning. You know, you got to push that reset button. And the 33 dives to the outside, and he's going to be able to make it. He left the throttle wide open and slingshotting around. There he is, going to seal the deal with a pass up the inside. So Eck now finds himself sitting on that final spot inside the top five. He was in a podium spot just earlier this lap. A beautiful pass there for the number 58 of Jensen. So now the 33 machine moves into fourth place and Brandon Glenn coming out of Arlington, Texas. And starting to see the 17 sitting down a little bit. Things are happening quick. A lot of intensity early in this first plus 30 moto. And Zach, this is where we talk about the fitness. This is where it comes into play. Midway through that moto, you know, you're getting past. Your mind gets off your focus, and then you start breathing too much. You stop breathing. That's one thing that a lot of people do. You stop breathing. You lose that breath. And then before you know it, you've been past two or three times. You hear a lot of riders talking about they had to had to settle, as now we look at a very settled number two machine of Brock Peterson, uh, and they have to kind of get into a rhythm. Oftentimes, when you're in a hype, a hype about battle, your heart rate's spiking. You're going as hard as you can, and uh, if you're somebody like the number 17 who had kind of two of those back to back. He's probably trying to regroup, catch his breath a little bit, and I think you're going to try to mount a charge in that final five minutes or so. Remember, you got 20 minutes, but you got two laps after that. So, Eck, just going to try to hang on to the rear wheel of Glenn on the 33. Maybe make a pass before this thing's all said and done. And that triple we just saw Glenn there do going into storyline, I think that's going to be a crucial jump this entire week. Watching practice yesterday, as the track got chewed up, as the ruts and braking bumps on the face got worse, it was kind of a uh, one of those separators that we have out here at Loretta's. And there's not a ton of those when we talk about jumps. So I think that's going to be one that uh, will either make or break somebody's week out here. Yeah, no doubt about it. It is going to definitely change things up if you're not able to make it over that one. As we see the number 58 on screen coming over the Rocky Mountain. And look at that, Zach Glenn on that 33 machine, able to close in just a little bit. Yeah, you're 100% correct there, Jackson. Taking a look over his shoulder as he pulls out of the corner. But uh, I think we're going to see Glenn really try to get into this third place spot. Jensen also taking a look over the shoulder. And uh, Zach, that's one thing we talk a lot about. You get them in your sight like that, you know they're just right there. It gives you that little motivation, that little push you needed to get on through. Well, absolutely, and I was just about to say, you know, focus forward, focus on what's ahead of you. These riders that are glancing back over their shoulder, uh, don't worry, man, there's somebody back there, I promise. You don't need to really worry about who, uh, because I think that just kind of makes them tense up going along with everything else. 
So right now, the number two machine, Peterson doing exactly what he wanted to do out front. The camera, or the battle on camera, I'm sorry, is the number 33 of Glenn trying to make the pass around Jensen for this final podium spot out here. Oh, a mistake from Glenn there, you saw that. And now we're starting to see the ruts develop. We're starting to see these faces get a little more chewed up and uh, the good old Loretta's that we know and love. They're starting to come out as, we're also starting to get into a little bit of lap traffic as well, Jackson. Yeah, lap, tra lap traffic will definitely play into it this week here at Loretta Lens. And Zach, it looks like the 58 is able to close up just a little bit on the number 12. We'll see if we have a pass per second here before this one's over. Yeah, this one is going to be exciting to watch. Lots of movement up in the top of the pack as McConnell kind of tiptoed through those ruts there. And I think uh, I think Jensen was starting to feel the heat behind him. He said, I have got to go before Glenn catches up to me. This is going to be a three-rider battle before it's all said and done. As they make their way through the Rocky Mountain sand section. And Jackson, we talked about as they get ready to go up and over the Rocky Mountain. We saw yesterday a couple riders sending it all the way over to that first roller. Doesn't look like any of these Vet 30 Plus are doing it here in this first moto. But that's another one of those jumps that uh, we weren't even aware that was a jump before we saw the first yep. guy do it. And the, surprisingly, the first one we saw do it was the 50 Plus class, at least for me. Yeah, no, it's uh, impressive stuff here in the Vets. They know how to do it, and that is what they're doing right now as we are watching the number 58 machine is currently sitting in that third place spot but he's putting the pressure on McConnell there he's watching them out this tower as they come around the finish line and the backsides of these jumps are really starting to get chewed up Jackson yeah Zach now we're starting to see the ruts come into play the breaking bumps are starting to form and we're setting the stage for the rest of our day here at Loretta Lens so watching Jensen fade out of view there coming through the Yamaha mechanics area and there we go, three riders in the same shot. The number 12 of McConnell kind of leading this freight train here. And it's, it's such a hard thing to do when you hear the rider behind you and you're trying to focus forward as the 58 trying to get a run through the Ten Commandments around the outside. You can tell that 58 is wanting to make a move, trying to find some different lines out here, see how he can set this up. Jason McConnell hugging that inside line right now with Dustin Jensen hot on the heels as they head off into Storyland. Looks like they were kind of breaking away from Glenn, the number 33. He's still in the back of that frame, but he was close to the 58 about a lap and a half ago. Glenn put on a hard charge early here in this moto. I have to wonder if it's taking effect on him now. And I'm not 100% sure, though. I might have just seen the 58 wiping his goggles. I'm not sure whether he was pulling a tear off there and missed it. I didn't see any laminate fall off. And if it is out of tear offs, that could be detrimental as well. You start getting sprayed with this sand, having to wipe it off every time you're up in the air. And Zach, as anybody knows that races motocross, that does not work well when you have to wipe the goggles. Vision is crucial. As we see the number 12 on screen now coming around the Polysport Pond into the finish. He has still got company by the number 58 of Jensen, and he's closing up on him now. Yeah, Jensen's really deciding it's time to make a move. The 58's pulling the trigger as they come across the finish line. And let's see, Jensen was fast right here coming into the Yamaha. He's trying to slingshot around the outside. We saw that earlier, Jackson. Is he going to be able to make it stick, Zach? I think he's got the line. McConnell kinds of looks over there and slams the door so wow look at that the 58 of his. jensen gets the job done dustin jensen making the pass for second place we'll see if the number 12 of mcconnell is able to retaliate looks like he is trying to mount a response here and he's going to run it tight up the inside coming into the ten commandments exactly you can already see those breaking bumps starting the form starting to throw those guys around and it looks like the 58 is going to secure that second place spot for now. We'll see whether or not McConnell is able to hang on. See whether or not Glenn's able to get up in that mix as well. I know the number 33 is watching the battle up ahead of him. He was just coming into the Ten Commandments when they were exiting. And uh, Jackson, as we take a look down further on our list here, Mason Eck now currently sitting in that fifth place spot. Jeff Loop in sixth. 
Kenny Henry sitting in the seventh place spot with Shane O'Banion in eighth. Michael Mitchell now moves his way up to the ninth place spot with Tracy Floyd rounding out the top ten. Yeah, Zach, and your leader, the number two Honda of Brock Peterson, he has a 11 second gap as we sit right now. Yeah, Peterson doing exactly what he came to do. And look at the lap times that he is running, a 159.6. Uh, closest that I'm seeing to that. Actually, look, Jeff Luke running a 158 that last lap. And Zach, so, looking here at Brock Peterson's best lap time, it was a 152. That's about three seconds faster than anybody else on the track. And a 152 is one of the lowest numbers I've saw here all weekend. Yeah, I think that was one of the quickest numbers I've seen even in practice yesterday. And uh, I mean, every time we've caught a glimpse of him on screen, he just looks like he's riding effortlessly. Whereas uh, right here, the 58, He's had to earn every bit of it. He has been fighting tooth and nail to move into that second place spot, running a 159 on that last lap. Yeah, Zach, that number two of Brock Peterson is going, going, gone here this morning at Loretta Lens. So watching through the woods here at Loretta Lens, day one, race one, and Brock Peterson is sitting in position number one at the moment watching our live timing and scoring here in the tower update got some shaking around there in the top 10 tracy floyd moves up to ninth uh mitchell moves up to eighth and chad wages now moves into that 10th place spot not sure what happened to the number 36 might have had a mistake or gone down he dropped a couple of positions and now james mcneil sitting in that 12th place spot alex hildebrand sitting 13th some yellow flags flying here as we continue to watch the number 58 of Dustin Jensen sit in that second place spot. And, and don't get me wrong, Jackson, Jensen's riding fantastic, but I just don't see him being able to chip into Brock Peterson's lead right now. Looks like Brock's kind of going into uh, cruise control mode, just trying to bring this thing home as uh, we start to get close to that two lap card coming out. And as you can see on the left-hand side of your screen, we have three minutes left to go here in this Bet 30 Plus class for Moto Number One. And guys, this is the Monster Energy AMA Amateur National Motocross Championships here at Loretta Lands, presented by Amsoil. And Jackson, guys, we are, we are going off. off. A, we're starting this off with a bang. We had Vet 30 and then 450B sitting on the line next. Some fast riders taken to this track early as we watch the number 58, starting to work his way through some heavy lap traffic there. So it looks like the white flag is actually out here. Not sure whether that race clock on screen is correct. White flag is flying. I know they had to stop watch on them. So one lap to go. This one's going to be one to watch here. Is now there. We got the leader on screen, the number two, Brock Peterson. And Zach, you can spot him easy. That front number plate, crystal clean. Can be. Crystal clean out there as he is popping off in the storyland. And what a great first moto ride here for Brock Peterson. You know, really smooth out there, Zach came and did exactly what I'm sure he was looking to do here this morning. First yeah. moto of Loretta Lens. Absolutely, this is exactly how you want to come out. Confidence is going to be on an all-time high at the moment. As Jim kind of just cruising as he makes his way into the sand section. And this is one of those stressful moments, Jackson. This is not the time you want to tuck a front end, make a silly mistake. Look, one rider going down. So the number two up and over the Rocky Mountain. Look at that, taking some different lines. Not sure what he was seeing. But I think Peterson just trying, just trying to bring this thing home. A couple more corners. As they make their way around the Polysport Pond one last time. Here we go, coming into the final corner. And the first checker flag of the week, getting ready to come out the number two, Brock Peterson. Going to grab the first moto win of the week here at Loretta Lynn's Vet 30 Plus going to the number two. We'll see how the 